Only eight days after the last high risk, the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma has issued another high risk of severe weather focused on similar areas including the cities of Tupelo and Columbus, Mississippi and Florence, Alabama. This is the current position of the high risk based on the first day one outlook, but it could expand or change shape as the day progresses. This encompasses over one million people and presents a very dangerous threat which we are going to get into the details of in this video and we've got a lot to cover. We're looking here at the SRF model. Uh, the key thing we're looking at here is the in the Southern Plains we have a developing shortwave trough and co-located Vortmax. As this progresses through the day, we see by 00Z this evening, this becomes a very stout, very strong, highly amplified shortwave trough, negatively tilted with associated Vortmax and strong downstream dynamics, which is going to be promoting strong surface cyclogenesis. As we note here, 12Z in the morning, we have a uh, 1004 millibar surface low based on weather prediction center forecast and by the time we get to 00z this low has progressed all the way up to here and we are now down to 996 millibars that is rapid that is a rapid pressure fall within that that's rapid deepening that is a strongly intensifying system and it's intensifying very quickly what's that going to lead to well, during the morning hours, we're going to see an increase in moisture advection through the, the deep south. We see right here in the warm sector of the cyclone, which is located right here at uh, the surface, we've got surface dew points coming right into this area that could be in the upper 60s to low 70s. Very moist environment. 850 millibar relative humidities are also on the uh, 85 plus percent range which would be indicative of a very moist boundary layer air mass and very low LCL heights. And we're going to get middle of the lapse rate steepening in association with some EML loft advecting into this area. So what we get from this moisture, from this destabilization, is this. By the afternoon hours, we could be looking at very strong instability right into this area we could be seeing surface-based cape values of two to 3,000 joules per kilogram per the Storm Prediction Center's new forecast discussion. So we've got significant instability right in through here, and that's for surface-based parcels. That's not MU, that's surface-based. Also, we've got an intense upper level uh, system coming in that's gonna lead to very strong wind shear, and this is one of the concerning things about this setup that I have not seen in a very long time. We're going to be first looking here. This is 500 millibar flow uh, from Pivotal Weather. And we see the short wave over Texas as it amplifies rapid intensification of mid-level flow. We look here. This is when it has become a very strong short wave. We've got very strong defluence and divergence in the exit region of this jet streak. But the very concerning thing for the severe weather setup down in the deep south that we're looking at is this. Because in this area right here that I'm highlighting, we could see 500 millibar flow of 70 to 80 knots. And in this area right in here that I'm highlighting that covers the high risk area, we're looking at 500 millibar flow of 80 to 85, maybe even 90 knots. That is exceptional. And that's covering part of the warm sector. That is what's so highly concerning. And what's that going to translate to? Well, we're looking at effective bulk shear through the uh, Midwest all the way down to the Deep South. And by 21Z, we have an incredibly sheared environment right in through here that could be marked by effective bulk shear values of 65 to 80 knots. And that progresses further to the east. Also, we've got a maximum of it right up in here. Uh, instability is a lot lower up here, so we could see some severe weather, could see some organized storm structures. I wouldn't rule out tornadoes, especially in southern and southern central parts of Indiana and Kentucky also, but uh, instability is a lot lower down here. What we're really concerned about is this area down here because we have incredibly strong wind shear and strong instability. But what's the low level shear like? That's another highly concerning aspect of this setup. In the morning, we've already got the strong low-level jet that's developing right into here over Louisiana and Mississippi. This is a 
big player in destabilization because we might have some thunderstorms ongoing over this area during the morning hours but this low level jet is going to be amplifying during the morning and really pumping in moisture and increasing the instability during the morning hours and compensating for some cooling that may take place during uh during the morning from the earlier storms but look at this we have 850 millibar flow as we head through the day by 21z and by 00z this is rapidly intensifying to where we have co-located with strong instability 500 uh 850 millibar flow that is in the 55 to 65 knot range and potentially higher than that in some places what's that going to lead to very strong low level velocity this is zero to one kilometer layer that we're looking at here and we see as we head through the day into the afternoon hours we've got zero to one kilometer srh right in this area in particular that is over 300 to 400 meters square per second squared the same area has effective bulk or effective storm relative velocity of 350 to 600 meters square per second squared that is going to lead to a volatile environment as we see here in this forecast sounding we're going to look at a couple things number one the high relative humidity that characterizes the boundary layer so we've got low cloud heights and we've got very uh easy convective generation we've got some emls aloft eml advection into the area going to be increasing lapse rate steepness and we also have over here in the wind profile very strong wind on basically all levels low levels mid levels right there we got upper levels too of course very strong wind shear but the thing we really need to note is the curvature and the intensity of the wind all the way from the low levels to the mid levels which is rapidly strengthening it is highly curved and we see this incredibly curved hudograph this catches my eye every time i'm looking at this setup because that is a very large and very curved hudograph and that is going to lead to an entire a type of environment that we don't see very often we see down here the composite parameters we've got supercell composite over 27 and effective stp of 9 that is so high that if we look over here in the box and whisker plots that is right here that's above the 75th percentile for ef4 plus tornadoes so that is characterizing an extremely unstable environment that is marked by very strong instability and intense to extreme wind shear that is what we're dealing with in this setup that's why the storm prediction center has gone high risk so we're going to look at the simulated reflectivity from the HRRR. I'm going to point out a couple things. Number one, we've got convection going on in the morning. That could be elevated. That could be severe in some cases. But what we're really concerned about is what's going to be happening as we head through the afternoon hours. Because this moves up to the north. We get some destabilization to the south. And we have uh, a couple hours of that going on. And then it's during the 17Z to 18Z time frame that we really get stuff developing. This is going into the high risk area and you'll note these are discrete storms these are uh, supercellular in nature they've got the hooked nature to them they've got highly uh, defined updraft velocity tracks and this is going to be spreading through the high risk and moderate risk areas through the day and leading to the potential for tornadoes which I don't say this very often, but we are look could be looking at the high end of things, tornado intensities that could be possibly in the EF3 to EF5 range. We're looking at potential for long track, strong to violent tornadoes, particularly through this area right in here where we have the high risk and possibly an extension of the high risk as the day progresses. Uh, don't want to leave out Kentucky and Southern Indiana too. We could see some organized storm structures during the day with an intense cyclone moving into Indiana uh, could be some tornadoes associated with that as well but we are looking at a significant severe weather threat on March 25th 2021 in the deep south have a tornado plan ready have your shelter stocked and stay tuned to social media and news outlets for updates as this dangerous situation develops today this has been a risk evaluation for a high risk March 25th 2021